Elden Ring is one of the greatest games of all time. It's got giant swords, badass bosses, and a beautiful open world to ride around in. It's only missing one thing, Batman. While Batman has a slightly better track record in terms of video game adaptations, with two and a half good ones and one extra good boss fight from a bad game, it's been over 10 years since Arkham City. I think we're overdue for another great Batman game, which is why I decided to put The Dark Knight into FromSoft's latest genre-defining classic. However, with a stringent no-kill policy and a combat strategy revolving around hand-to-hand -hand skills, would Bruce be suited for a trip through the lands between? Only one way to find out. Let's play Arkham Soul. Souls. If you want to watch these runs live, join my Patreon. I stream a couple times a week. Could do it on Twitch, but I already have the Patreon and don't want to ask for money on two different sites. I know not everyone's a billionaire. Also, we always get a big spike in views on the second day for these videos, so just subscribe and watch them day one. Now, let's get nuts. <laughs> We're starting off with the Bandit class. It's got all the stats we need and none of the stats we don't. Bandits only start off at level 5, which gives us a lot of flexibility once we start spending our runes. The grafted Scion drops down and unfortunately we can't kill it. Not because of a lack of skill, well not only because of a lack of skill, but because Batman does not kill. So neither will we. If there's an enemy with the ability to speak to us, we won't be killing it. Probably gonna make this an F tier build, Elden Ring requires a lot of murder. Thankfully, Barbara Gordon finds our injured body at the bottom of a cliff and brings us to Limgrave then leaves us abandoned in a cave. She can't do everything for us. We head to the Church of Ayla, pick up a $20 bill someone dropped outside, and buy a crafting kit. Where does Batman get all those wonderful toys? He makes them, obviously. I avoid some murder and touch the gate front grace to meet with Babs again. This time she gives us a period appropriate Batmobile, the Spectral Steed. It's even got auto start, with a whistle we can use to summon it wherever we are. And unlike some other billionaires auto driving cars, this one doesn't randomly explode. Love that for us. Now that we have the coolest ride, we can grab the whetstone knife to augment our gauntlets later, we can save a nice young pot's life, buy some materials for bat bombs, find a first aid flask in the Church of America, and warp through a hole in the back to end up in the disgusting land of filth, disease, and rot, Gotham. It's pretty clear that we're heading to kill the Grey Old Dragon, but our order of operations is a little different this time. We actually need to jump into Fort Faroth first, mostly for the Golden Rune 12, but as long as we're here, I'm going to scoop up Radagon's Sword Seal as well. That'll raise our Strength, Dexterity, Vigor, and Endurance by 5, at the expense of taking some extra damage. Funnily enough though, at lower levels, the extra Vigor and Strength raises your physical defenses, so the penalty is even less steep. After we've plundered the scary Dark Bat Castle, we ride over to the isolated Merchant's Shack. Despite no accomplishments whatsoever, Whatsoever so far, Babs shows up and is so impressed with us she takes us to the Batcave. Now that's what I call a silver spoon. I actually wanted to be at the Merchant Shack though because he sells spiked K couscous couscous spiked Greek boxing gloves. They got yogurt and lemons in them, maybe. The yogurt and lemons make stuff bleed, which is very important when we're gonna go kill the gray old dragon. Another piece of that puzzle is pickles. So we're gonna take a detour to Limgrave, grab our bad pickle, and then come for the dragon's booty. There's gotta be a better way to say that. After fisting away, the dragon eventually gets a sweet release and gives us a huge load of runes. I bump Vigor up to 30 to not be dead and Strength to 19. The Greek boxing gloves scale equally with Strength and Dexterity, and Strength also will raise our physical defense. So while Dexterity might seem the more Batman score, Strength is the smarter move, which is the real Batman move. Although actually the most Batman move is being rich. Since the Wayne family made their fortune farming pickles, that's a true comic fact to look it up, we need to continue that level. Legacy. We roll over to the Murkwater Cave and Zaz is waiting for us outside. He loves knives and making people bleed. Also, this one has a magic power that stops us from going into caves while he's alive. Uh-oh. Thankfully, there's a murder-happy swordsman who shows up, Rajal Ghoul. So we just have to kite Zaz over to him for the kill. But Raz spawns in way further away, so I got carved up. The next time, Raish lands the final blow. It might look like I did, but I confirmed with chat that I was just holding Zaz steady, trying to make him surrender. And Raz got the final hit. No violation of the no-kill policy. Also, I deliberately said Raz and Raish. I haven't found an accurate pronunciation. Everybody says it differently. It's different in several different adaptations. So yeah, everyone can be mad at me. Inside Murkwater Cave, my close personal friend Harvey Dent has a shop set up. I don't know where he is, so I'll just open this chest and oh no, he's going to face mode. Thankfully, Batman knows how to help someone struggling with their inner demons. It's face punching. After a hearty dose of face punching, Harvey calms down and gives us his pickle, recipe, and three pickles right away. Now that we have Batman's inherited wealth superpower, we need to share that wealth with the next generation. This is a fantasy game after all. 
our sidekick is quite a ways away in the cliffs next to Lernia of the Lakes. It's a good thing the Batmobile is fast. We get there after about five minutes of riding. I'm not totally sure how to get to the cliff bottom caves the intended way, since in the practice run, I just accidentally did some Batmobile parkour down. So that's what I do this time too. It works out great. The Batmobile is so durable. Deep inside the cave, we find the spirit ashes for the page summon. The in-game description is, Spirit of a page who traveled at the side of a noble he served, uses a piercing sword and crossbow to defend his master. One becomes a page merely by accident of being born into obscurity. Nothing is asked of ability, talent, or volition. Basically, he's poor and living on the streets, wears a hood, and has a penchant for murder. Jason Todd, welcome to the squad. At this point, Jason is untrained, so we head to the Weeping Peninsula to grab upgrade materials. Apparently, Robins are trained with skunk grass, which is surprising. I always thought Bruce would have the good stuff. While there, we bash up one of Poison Ivy's goons for some plot armor, the Opaline Bubble Tier. How does Batman beat threats way outside his power level? Plot armor. We're gonna do the same. Inside the Tombs Ward catacombs nearby, we can grab Grave Glove Warts. We need to upgrade Robin. Technically, Oracle's gonna train him in the Batcave. I know Babs is already Melina, but I just don't think about it too much. While we're here, we also have Alfred upgrade our gauntlets. He's chained to a workbench. Bruce is not pro-union. Now that Robin is a little tougher, we can go fight a real boss, Clayface, or in this game, Margaret to the Fell Omen. We also get Dr. Fate to help us. Hopefully, neither of these other two characters kill him. That would just be horrible. Margaret, I'm going to let you live. Margaret, I'm tr I'm I'm trying to surrender. Margaret, I don't want to have to kill you. <gasps> Jason! Jason, that kills people. I'm very disappointed in you. Great job. Can't believe he would do that. You try and teach a kid to solve his problems with nearly deadly violence, and then all of a sudden he wants to solve his problems with escalated violence? Who could have seen this coming? Clayface's death gives us a talisman pouch to expand our utility belt, so it's not all bad. We just need a black suit now to complete the look. Since we beat Clayface, we're able to head further into Stormvale Castle. Of the so-called safe path, there's a locked door that requires a key from another room. Unfortunately, Two-Face locks us inside with a wind knight, and we can't summon Robin. So after we grab the key, the only way out is to take a death to the wind knight. I don't know if I should count this in the death counter for the run, since it was mandatory after an arbitrary extra rule, and I'll just put an asterisk next to it. We move higher and higher, eventually hopping around on rooftops. You can't have a Batman run without running on rooftops. That's where we find one of the scariest bosses in the run. Ladders. As we climb the ladder, a bunch of dudes that we can't kill are gonna shoot us. The higher we go, the more likely we are to fall to our death. It's intense. But after we reach the top, we get the Claw Talisman, which boosts our jump attack damage by 15%. Check out how effective it makes this sweet jump attack. Let's hit them with the biggest plunging attack they've ever seen. Oh. Death five. Now we need to get a very important weapon in Bruce's arsenal, the Bat Credit Card. Never leave the cave without it. On our way back to Gotham, we beat a skeleton back to death, which doesn't violate the no-kill rule since it's a zombie. Batman can kill zombies. We'll use those runes to buy more pot, which we can turn into fire bombs with butterflies we grab from some fire slugs. Some bold directorial choices for this Batman game. Those are going to help us get our credit card in the abandoned cave. Gotham is already a cesspool, but the abandoned cave is the toilet of the cesspool, absolutely soaked in rot and filled with a bunch of jerks who want to poison us. At the bottom, the clean rot knights. Two even worse jerks who want to gank but they're weak to fire, and I can summon Robin to avoid the gank. Throwing a bunch of fire pots at the first one will drop them to almost death, and I finish him off quickly. But that doesn't count as murder because their souls are bound, so they don't die until you kill both of them, maybe? And Robin kills the second one, so that death is on him. Bad Robin. I'm so proud of you. Killing them rewards us with the Golden Scarab, boosting our rune acquisition by 20%. It's a phenomenal interest rate, something you only get if you're a trust fund baby. We boogie back over to Lernia and head down through the Raya Lucaria Crystal Cave for materials to upgrade our punchers. Since this is going to take a while, I'll explain why we're using the spiked gloves instead of the normal gloves. Originally, my plan was to switch to the normal gloves after you can buy them from the gatekeeper when you beat Clayface. But after doing some digging, I found out that the spiked gloves don't just add bleed, they also deal more base damage and have the same scaling. There's no reason to use the normal gloves, and Lord knows, Batman's gloves be spiky. Anyway, the Crystallian isn't a problem, and it's also not a person. It's just a ghost possessing rocks. Beating it to death is fine. That gives us enough smithing stones to level our gloves up to plus nine, but we can go higher. Literally. Heading north will bring us to the ruin strewn precipice, a pretty easy area with a bunch of level four smithing stones. It's not as easy though if you can't kill the vulgar militia 
guarding the elevator. Since I dropped off the elevator to grab one of two smithing stone fives, I have to play ring around the rosy while I wait for it to come back down. And after it drops down, two of them ride the elevator with me where I don't have enough room to dodge. Another death because I can't kill. Second try, I make it up the elevator and fight some bats. Bruce is very afraid of bats. The best way to face your fears is with punching. By the time we reach the top, we can level up our fists to plus 13 just in time to fight a dragon. Or a T-Rex from Jurassic Park? He fights one of those in the Lego Batman movie, the best Batman movie by the way. So I'm okay saying the game is still canon. Slamming it in the head with jump attacks does a bunch of poise damage and opens it up for a huge critical. Since it's an animal, we can kill it guilt-free. Batman isn't vegan, he is way too into leather. Speaking of, let's go get some leather. After smashing the dragon, we can ride up the elevator to Altus, where the sage's cave hides cape and cowl. I tried to make a shortcut jump, because honestly, this cave kind of pisses me off, and I failed. But I'm still able to run through it pretty easily on the second try and grab the raptor's black feathers. It's a sweet black cape themed to an avian animal, and will allow us to perform huge aerial takedowns. Like the claw talisman, it boosts our jump attack damage, but only by 10%. Still, it stacks with the talisman. That's 26% total to the jump attacks. Even though we can't dive bomb off a building, we'll still have superiority in the air. So now, we're ready to fight the ultimate threat of the DC Universe, Darkseid. Apparently, when we get to Altus, that rang a bell that cannot be unrung. It makes more sense if you watch the extended cut of Dark Souls 3, where Vari takes a bath with Steppenwolf. FromSoft's shared universe gets messy. But Darkseid is on his way, so we need to head back to Gotham, assemble the Justice League, and kick his ass. Passing over the impassable Great Bridge is really easy. There's a portal that you can warp through at the end of it. Kind of a misnomer. Inside the castle, Constantine has brought together the best heroes in the DC universe. We got Steel, Deathstroke. A uh, plastic man stretching himself to look like a big pot. Entering the fight, Darkseid starts spamming the Omega lasers that only Batman's superior reflexes can dodge. In between blasts, we summon heroes to join us. Hopefully, heroes that don't have a strict no-kill policy like we do. Since Darkseid can bleed pretty easily, actually, we bought some bleed batarangs, Kukri. They're a little bit slower than traditional throwing knife batarangs, but they stack bleed to eventually do a big chunk of damage to Darkseid's health. It's also why Deathstroke is probably the most important person we can summon. He's also stacking bleed. Even with this unlikely assortment of heroes, we're still gonna take a couple else. We're fighting him at level 41, so even with the world's finest, this is a struggle. When we actually win, it's not even because of our batarangs, it's just raw punching talent. From what I could find, the cape and claw talisman do not boost the damage we do to enemy poise. But anecdotally, in my experience, this bat build was breaking enemy poise faster than anything I've used, including the Royal Greatsword when I played Blyde for my D&D channel, link in the annotation if you're interested. The fists are classified in the lowest poise damage weapon category, they share it with daggers. So my only theory is that the cape and claw talisman are boosting that. No official idea, though. Breaking Darkseid's poise will let us stack some bleed with some rapid fire punches. Of course, we don't end him ourselves. That would be murder. We give him every opportunity to surrender. The rest of the Justice League murders him. How could they do that? I know this section was short, but I can't work with them anymore. Besides, would you really want to watch four hours of Batman just running around asking people to join the Justice League? That would be so boring. Let's just go back to training Robin. He's not going to kill anyone. <laughs> Training Robin can be a little expensive, and if we want to get into Metropolis, we need to take down two shard bearers anyway, so let's go help Zatanna. She left us a key and a rock outside her place, but a dragon fell asleep on. So we're gonna punch it in the face until it's dead. Not a person, doesn't break the rule. Also, just look at how freaking rad it is that Batman can punch a dragon in the face and stun it faster than any of the other characters. The cape isn't just for aesthetic, it also really kicks ass. In the Link video, I tried to do Raya Lucaria in 10 minutes. I was able to do it there, so if Batman wants to be better than Link, that's our window. Ride up the elevator, ignore some zombies, kill a dog, dogs aren't people, don't kill Moongrum, Moongrum is people, watch him fall off the elevator to his death, that's a Batman move, and kill Zatanna's mannequins. They're mannequins, not kids, don't worry. Then, punch her a lot, go to the moon lake, and punch her to death. Just kidding, she's alive. Eight minute Raya Lucaria, Batman is the best. Unfortunately, this is where I realized I was leveling my strength instead of endurance. It's fine, I will want strength eventually for bigger punches, but I was trying to raise endurance to push us into to light equipment load. That boosts your invincibility frames while you're rolling, which is how I was accounting for Batman's superior reflexes. Oh well. 
quick detour back to where we fought Darkseid, that'll give us the Red Hot Wet Blade to get fire gloves for some of Poison Ivy's goons. Then we go back to Limgrave to buy an Ash of War so we can actually put the Ash of War on our gauntlets. There's a big tree in Gotham with one of Ivy's goons outside. Actually, several of Ivy's goons, but the big boy's bouncing booty will bludgeon them to death. That's not my fault. Burning the plant to death is also fine. It's a plant, not a people. The plant's juicy booty will drop a crystal tear that boosts our fire damage and will eventually help us kill more of Ivy's goons. It also gives us enough runes to get to light load as we enter the minor Erd Tree catacombs. Inside, we can get more ditchweed for Oracle to train Jason. It's a big old chain of parental negligence. I also show off my massive brain by remembering exactly where to go and equipping the quick step dash so I can move through the rotten basement safely. I am so smart! This is the wrong way. Before getting lost, whoops. All right, more quick errands. Grab another talisman pouch at the Bat Cave. Kill a gremlin who's so gremlin-y they're not a person, I don't have to feel bad about killing them for the Ritual Sword Talisman, which boosts our attack damage by 10% when we're at full HP. That's 39% after stacking with the jumping boosters. Massive. I kill another Ivy Goon for 100,000 runes. Grab the Pearl Drake Talisman, plus one, for 8% non-physical damage resistance. Kill another zombie for enough runes to level up Robin. Ride up a mountain grabbing volcanic rocks and rob Gelmnir Hero's grave for the weed we need to get Robin to plus seven. Also, I dodge these traps like a frickin' badass. Go, 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 go. I am the fastest bat alive. That's some Batman moves. Now that the Dark Knight and the Boy Wonder are properly strong, let's head to Metropolis. Superman took the week off, and it's overrun with baddies. There's even a villain outside, the Draconic Tree Sentinel, blocking entry. But he's no match for DC's most dynamic duo. Robin and I clear that jump in a minute flat. Oh, and he's not dead. He comes back later? Don't worry, he's just very sleepy. Off to Metropolis. Oh yeah, this is some good Batman stuff. Running on rooftops, ignoring crimes committed by rich people, wearing thick black leather on a hot summer day. Perfection. We make our way up to the high-tech simulation of Bane, but all that training isn't gonna help us on an empty stomach. I forgot to craft pickles. So we go back to Limgrave, kill some penguins, not like Oswald Cobblepot, literal penguins. It's still messed up, but it's not against Batman's rules, and I die again. Robin got distracted by the enemies outside the fog gate, it happens. But the next run goes smoother, much smoother. Another one minute fight. Kinda wish the real Bane was here so we could give him the sauce. Heading up the tower, one of Rachel Ghoul's assassins is coming after us, but we can't summon Robin to kill her, so we just head straight to the next boss. Not before summoning Batgirl, though. This is Clayface at his most powerful. We need the whole Bat family. We fought him earlier, but he's extra mad because we ignored his disguised form in Altus. Basil is a bit of a drama queen that way. That extra rage means a sharper sword, and eventually vomiting a bunch of clay around the arena that bubbles up and explodes. Real sicko stuff. I know he needs help though, so I back off and offer to take him to Arkham. Robin and Batgirl are feeling too murdery though. R.I.P. Clayface. Murder isn't enough for Batgirl though. Now she wants to commit arson by burning down the Erd Tree. I'm all about letting my protégés make their own mistakes, so let's go get some fire after we get some bread. <laughs> Honestly, I only did this part because I had a half an hour left of streaming time and I knew the ride through the mountain top of the giants would take about that long. I thought it would be better to just fight a dragon again, so we head to Gotham and fight Grail. He drops a bunch of runes. He also breathes fire, so I died the first time. No big deal. And now that we're over leveled, let's do all of Stormvale Castle in five minutes. Take the risky path, dodge the ballistas. Don't worry about summoning Wonder Woman. The fight will be easy enough. Forget you don't have enough magic to summon Robin, Cowabunga. Come back, punch Godric a lot. Admire his new dragon arm, punch him more. Offer him a chance to surrender and oh, Jason! And killed Godric. But you know what killed the dinosaurs? What killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age! <laughs> Stream 2 starts, and I'm feeling confident. We boogie across the Forbidden Lands and ride up the elevator to Mr. Freeze's Mountain. I scoop up the Smithing Stone Bell Bearing 3 to upgrade our fist plus 18, then enjoy the Batmobile's all-wheel drive. It really handles winter weather well. If you watched our other runs, you know that Fire Giant is not who I fear on this mountain. It's Okina, or Deathstroke in Batman Elden Ring. I fear him even more this time since I can't kill him, and I can't summon Robin to kill him either. So I use Batman's greatest tool, stealth. Instead of dealing with the rivers of Bologna, 
Tony, I just scoot into the church, grab the deer, and bail like Christian. That's an actor who played Batman. Maybe it's because I didn't die to Okina, but I actually ended up dying to the fire giant. First time in these runs. And second time, too. The second time, I brought crystal darts to throw at his big honkin' eye in phase two, not realizing that my magical batarangs consumed my magic, which I used almost all of to summon Robin. I was really confused, and I'm chalking up the loss to that. For the victory run, we get tons of poise breaks on a boss with incredibly high poise. We break his poise before we break his anklet. That's absolutely bananas. The only way that is possible in my mind is if the damage boosts from the cape, claw, and ritual sword talisman are also affecting poise damage. I could be really wrong, but we're using fist weapons. They should not be staggering bosses like this. When he rips off his legs for phase two, I throw kukri batarangs instead of the magic ones. They're a little slower, but they also stack bleed. That's another big factor for taking the big boy down, since bleed does damage based on a percentage of the boss's total health, and this guy has a lot of health. Overall, not that hard, and I can kill him since he doesn't talk. I'm not a killer, but I could be if I had one bad day. Cause you had a bad day, you take it one down. Yeah, it's bad day time for me. Uh, the best way for a bad day to happen is when a good day is interrupted. And I was having a very good day. I helped Batgirl commit arson. I got warped to some edgy ruins and I didn't even die stopping at an unnecessary grace. Then I went to level up my little murder boy, diving into the giant conquering hero's grave and getting grave glove warts eight, nine, and 10. I even got to do more ladders. But I knew a potential day ruiner was up ahead, the Godskin duo, so I prepped. Anytime someone asks, could Batman beat a character in a fight, some jerk always says, uh, yeah, if he has prep time. Our prep time is grabbing some knockout gas from sleep pots. With them, we can make one of the Godskins fall asleep while Robin and I double team their boyfriend. It's a foolproof strategy. I get the recipe in Limgrave and grab some ingredients, also in Limgrave, then head into the battle totally prepared. Except I forgot to equip it. Whoops, not totally prepared, I died. But next time, I was totally prepared. Prepared. I put the penguin to sleep, he's faster than the Riddler for some reason, and I bodied the Riddler pretty quickly. Then I go for penguin, and it goes fine, until he summons Riddler back and I get rocked. Whoops. Third time's the charm, though. I didn't realize it only took one sleep pot to knock out Oswald. Of course, that doesn't matter if you whiff, so I spend my last two pots here. And then I choke again. God, oh, dang it. More prep time. I kill a dragon. It's not a people. Use the runes to max out Robin like I was supposed to earlier and grab more lilies to make more pots. That I forget to craft, so Cowabunga respawn at the grace. I go back in and am super liberal with the sleep gas. One guy sleeps. Stomp the skinny one. Summons penguin again. Sleep again. I used all four sleep pots and I don't regret it at all. These bastards deserved it, especially because they still freaking killed me, God. Now I'm pissed off. Other materials you farm respawn. Trina lilies apparently don't. So after wasting a full half hour getting sleepy gas, I'm just gonna bash my head against these two until they stop breathing. I die the first time. I don't the second. I hate it here. I wasted all that time getting sleepy pots and ended up beating them without them. When you think about it, it's kind of funny. It's like a bad joke. Ha, ha, ha. I'm a joker. I'm a smoker. I'm a midnight joker. I nailed the swag jump after Godskins, that's a pretty nice glimmer of hope. I grabbed the Dragon Crest Shield Talisman for 17% damage resistance. Things are looking good. Then I get slammed by the Crucible Knight. Oh, so funny. The Draconic Tree Sentinel is back and I can't summon Robin to kill him. But if he didn't die the first time, I'm sure slamming him will send him to Arkham very sleepy. And he kills me. Yeah, let's make him real sleepy. I know that the boss the Tree Sentinel is blocking was by far the hardest of my practice run. So I gotta kill an ugly bird in Lernia for some extra runes to max out my gauntlets. It kills me because I'm greedy. It's so funny. It's so funny. The ultimate boss is Batman's greatest villain, Catman. It's a really deep cut, but y'all Catman rules. Check out Gail Simone's Secret Six run if you haven't. Anyway, here's the issue with Catman. He jumps all around like a cat. It was a problem for Wolverine because he had short claws, and it's a problem for Batman whose claws are even shorter because you know, they're just fists. Maybe I should grab the claws and do an amalgamation of the builds. That would be a real dark claw. It should come as no surprise Catman kills us a few times, but I've actually gotten a little better at avoiding his attack since the link run. When he does the first jump AoE, just go behind him. Then he does a backflip with no attack rather than a front flip with a much bigger AoE that deals more damage than the first one. But on attempt number five, 
he killed Jason Todd. Who could have seen that coming? And Jason is my only kill option, since this guy can definitely talk. Although, this is pretty late in the Batman run, right? So we're probably around the, like, Dark Knight Returns era here. I guess I'll try and kill him by proxy. Now, if Batman were to move his fist forward while wearing a gauntlet, and Catman's face happened to be in the way, I would perceive it as not killing him directly. But if the bad guys are associated with a gauntlet that happens to hit them in the face, he would say, that's not really my problem. God, <laughs> a terrible take on a character. Anyway, let's go kill Alfred. After moving our gauntlet into Catman's direction until Catman stopped breathing, we're warped back to Metropolis, which is apparently covered in ash now. Hopefully Batgirl learns her lesson and doesn't commit arson again. Up some stairs and Alfred is there begging us not to go further and fight Bane. But you know what would be super cool and dark and edgy? What if Batman didn't just kill? What if he killed Alfred? That's the kind of edgy protagonist we love. Yeah, a little redemption from the Link run. Gideon dies in my first fight against him. This game says I killed him with my punches, but my chat assured me that it was a fire arrow from Robin right after the punch. Obviously, the health bar is just showing how long it takes to knock someone out. Red Hood took it too far this time. We're really close to leveling up, so I head to another Gotham Dragon and kill it really quickly with no guilt. It doesn't talk, it's not a people. Upstairs from where Robin mercilessly murdered Alfred is the man who broke the bat, Bane. Thankfully, all of our practice against the simulation earlier paid off. This version of the boss is technically a lot harder the first time you fight him, since you're going to start the fight directly next to him and it makes it harder to summon Robin. But I had plot armor equipped and I get to jump in. Bane hates my aerial takedowns a lot. They're dealing massive damage, even against the second to last boss. If you take anything away from this, it should be that the cape and claw combo is amazing. Phase 2, he rips off his armor, overloads with venom, and starts playing like a premier grappler from Injustice. Seriously, his grabs can one-shot most characters. So, easy strategy. Don't get grabbed. Okay, don't get grabbed twice. He kills Jason Todd, but I'm pretty sure Jason Todd just won't stay dead at this point. Still, I avenge him. You see, I was just jumping for calisthenic exercises as part of a mourning process. Bane happened to wander in and I landed on him to death. Total accident. What a great way to treat a character's guiding moral philosophy. I'm really respecting the legacy here. Maybe I'll learn my lesson, but probably not before the end times. You know, kingdom come. Wow, the final boss for the game is Gog, and that's a really deep cut. Nothing but respect for FromSoft. He's weak to fire, so I take a quick detour to buy Volcano Pots, which will burn through things pretty quickly. Unfortunately, that's not enough for an easy first try victory. I was a little disappointed. I got a first try win in the practice run, and beating Gog fast would make this our fastest build yet. So now I dip back to Stormvale and climb to the top of the Divine Tower of Limgrave to activate Godric's Great Rune. It boosts all of your stats by 5, effectively giving you 40 free levels. It's kind of busted, and it almost makes it feel like the writers just kind of want Batman to be better than everyone else. We collected four rune arcs through our travels. Hopefully, with the narrator bias, we can get this done, or at least make it to phase two. A big ugly space slug that ruins all the fun of Gog. Gog keeps the pressure up, manages your summon well, and bluffs you into panic rolling with delayed hits. He's a great boss to make sure you actually acquired a bit of skill before you got to the end credits. The Elden Beast is a coward who shows up after you beat Gog and runs away from you until you whiff enough dodges to die. So yeah, four rune arcs aren't enough. I cash in Bane's soul for more money, and by the last of the rune arcs in the Batcave. We all know that Batman's real power is money. Back to the Beast, we only die one more time before we claim victory. The strategy is pretty simple. Against Radagon, I slam those aerial takedowns when I have a safe window, and sometimes when I don't if I'm feeling greedy. Whoops. That'll stagger him, at which point I honestly recommend doing a rapid punch combo instead of a critical hit. The rapid punch combo does more. For the Elden Beast, we have a very different strategy. This is where I slam those aerial takedowns when I have a safe window, and sometimes when I don't if I'm feeling greedy. Whoops. Unlike Radagon, the Elden Beast is really hard to posture break, mostly because of this one attack where he flies into the air and makes a ring on the ground. The ring's easy enough to dodge, it just sucks because the whole time he's up there, he's recovering posture. And he usually flies to the other end of the arena when it's done, so you're almost never going to get a critical hit. Except we do! With the fists! So something is making us hit that posture really, really hard. I'm not making an excuse for killing this thing. I don't care if it can think. I don't care if it can speak. I don't care if it runs the Thomas and Martha Wayne Foundation. It's going to Die. Specifically, it dies six hours and seven minutes into the game, one minute ahead of Wolverine. Additionally, we beat 29 bosses, that's four more than Wolverine, and died 32 times, five less than Wolverine. Then we factor in that five of those deaths were because of our arbitrary no-kill policy or additional cowabungas for speed.
speed. So I think this is a really solid build. I'm gonna put it up at S tier, but I know it's on the lower end of S tier. The cape and claw combo is amazing for damage and sleep pots should be very useful against the godskin duos. I just have to be a little bit better at the game. If you wanna watch me get better, join my Patreon and watch these runs live at the $1 tier. It's $4 cheaper than a Twitch sub, so you can join without being Bruce Wayne. You can also subscribe to this channel to see the videos as soon as they go up or subscribe to another channel where I build fictional characters in Dungeons and Dragons. We'll have another build up soon and you're gonna love it.